Today, I'll be showing you how quick and easy it will be made to, to make a, a beautiful snack, which is called Carmen Dukla. It is my favorite. So in this bowl, you will need one cup of basin flour and or chickpea, either or other, but you can't do any other flour but those two. So if you've got chickpea, put one cup. If you've got basin, put only one cup. So in this bowl, one cup. You will also need a tablespoon of semolina and a half teaspoon of salt, which is what I have in here. And that is optional with the semolina. You don't have to, but do I do use it, so bear that in mind. We'll also be needing three quarters of a cup of water. It's only like that because I have my yogurt in there, because you need yogurt in this. Um, you need one quarter cup of plain yogurt, one and a half teaspoons of lemon juice, and one teaspoon of crushed ginger. And you will also be needing uh, one teaspoon of Eno. So this is the Eno that I am using. You don't like, you don't have to get lemon, you can get whatever Eno, but that's the one I am using. So that you'll put in at the last. So let's get started. And you'll be also needing a whisk. And then you'll also be needing a pot. I've got water in the bottom. I don't know if you can see. And then I've got a little container there. Then I sit another small cake tin on top. And then I put my batter into the, the just a small cake tin. This is specifically for the cum and dukla, but I'll then put that on top. So right now I've got my stove on medium to high heat with the water, so it's heating it up before I add it, my ingredient to the pan to cook to steam it is the word I'm looking for. So in this bowl, let's go. Let's get started. So semolina and salt. Just give it a little mix through. And then let's pop in our, you can put fresh chilies in there. Um, I do have a fresh chili, but I'll leave that for the tempering, which I will be also showing you which go what goes on top. So I'm just putting my yogurt in right now. Just scrape all that off, or as much as I possibly can. Just give that a little mix through. So in goes my garlic, oh not my garlic, sorry, my ginger and lemon juice. So I'm just going to be adding some chili powder. I do have fresh ch uh, a fresh chili, but like I said, I only got like one of them left, so. I'm just gonna put in about a roughly half teaspoon or just over half tea just over half a teaspoon, sorry, not just give that a little mix through. So this will taste like a sweet, spicy ish, salty taste. So I'm just gonna be adding my water. I'll just add that gradually. You can put it all in there at once if you really want. I only do that so it doesn't slop everywhere. Just give it a good mix through like that. Add some add the rest of my water. Just give it a good mix through. So you're going to be making a consistency of like a uh, batter. Like you normally would like for like battering fish or something like that. So you've got to whisk this through so there's no lumps. So you've got to make it quite smooth. Because you don't really want to be eating lumpy flour now, do you? No, who wants to eat lumpy flour? Okay. Now you you see it's quite runny, but that's all right because the eno will help with the fermentation of what needs to be done. This does not last long in my in my household. 
I love this one and my husband also loves this one, so. Alrighty, I'm just getting ready my whisk. And I'll just get my spoon that I had for my yogurt, just mix it, whatever's left on the spoon, just mix it through. Alright, this is the time we're going to add our Eno. So that is one teaspoon of Eno. So we're just going to pull that in, just there. Now what you're going to do, don't whisk. You've got to mix it through for about one minute. Not too briskly, just kind of mix it through so it ferments. And what's actually happening, happening it's activating with all the lemon and, and salt. So it's going to give it like a fluffy consistency. So when you do make this, it will come out fluffy, like a cake-like consistency. So as you can see, see the difference? Now, if you don't get this, that means you've had the Eno too soon. Bear that in mind. It still will work, but it won't be as fluffy if you don't do it this way. So it's well incorporated. So now I'm going to be getting my pan. And then I'm just going to pour my batter in there. Let's get all that batter in there. And your, your stove must be on medium to high heat. And you must heat your water up previously. You don't have to, but it is very advisable for you to do that. Just get every last bit out. Pop that one in there. So... This particular dish I have, I do have a certain pair of clamps that I use. So I'm just going to pick you up and move you over. Hopefully you can see my dish. So I've got my pan and I've got my water. That one's moving on me. been difficult. Let's move that one there, just in the middle. All right, now I will be adding my common dukla batter. So I pop that one in there and then you prop your lid on, so it's going to steam it right now. So it's on medium to high heat. So I'm going to put it on for about 20 minutes. And then after 20 minutes, I'll I will check it and use a clean skewer. So you'll actually poke it in the batter. When it comes out clean, it's cooked. So you just set that aside. So I'll let that cook for 20 minutes. All right, time has just gone off. Just going to get my tester open it up it's coming away from the sides too so I'm just going to test it right now to see whether or not it's can be taken off see how it's come out clean that's ready so that's been sitting there for 20 minutes see how quick and easy that was to make so I'm going to turn that off And I'll get set up and get ready for the tempering and what else we need to do. So once I take that one out, I'll be cutting it into squares before I add the tempering. So I'll be back shortly. Alrighty. So before I do that, I've got two tablespoons of oil in my pot on the stove heating up. So with your carbon dukla that you've just made, Use that one so I don't burn my little fingers. Just to steady it. So 
I'm going to be cutting squares. You can have them big or as little as you wish. I like good sizing, so this is how much I cut mine. So, and then you're going to cross them, cross cut. So you're going to be cutting. Sorry about that. I had a phone call. So I'm just going to continue to cut just like that. Okay, now that that's cut, I'm just going to let that sit there. So into my pan, let me just move that one out of my road for a minute so I can bring you in closer so you can see what I'm doing. Can you see? Yeah, you can see that one. So in this one here, I have some cumin seeds. I have uh, roughly a teaspoon or one to two teaspoons. Cumin seeds are optional. I just put that in mine. Um, and I have roughly two and a half tablespoons of brown mustard seeds. So I'm gonna be putting them in. You'll hear them sizzle and, and crack. So I'm just gonna quickly mix that one. So into that one, you will also be needing your fresh curry leaves, your fresh chili. You can have green chili. You don't have to have bird's eye, which is what I've got. I only use bird's eye because that's all I have. And also coriander. So I'm going to use about half of that into that there. So you'll also be needing, I think it's... Um, maybe two thirds or a quarter cup of water. So just fill up your dish, your bowl, whatever. I've got... Let's make it half a cup. That should make it a good consistency. So half a cup of water. So I'm just letting that sizzle. You'll also be needing your, uh, your hing, your aficidota, or however you say that. I never can say that. So that one, your yellow powder. So I'm just gonna, Good sprinkling, so I'd say that was roughly around about one, uh, one eighth teaspoon of thing. Just give it a quick mix because it will add extra flavour to your tempering. So now I'm going to be adding all my curry leaves. There's probably eight to ten curry leaves there. Probably will turn that one down a bit. you you can smell the deliciousness coming from that. It's really, really nice. Um, I will say around about a tablespoon of sugar, just pop that one into your water because that will be added as well. So maybe a tablespoon and a half, just mix it around your water a little bit so I don't spit too much of your fire. Okay, now I'm going to be chucking in my chilli. Turn it down so it's light, lightly sizzling. Tempering doesn't take that long, so now I'll be putting in my coriander. That was just about a tablespoon full. Give it a good mix. And this is where you add your sugar and water. So I've got my sugar and water in here. Add that and then let it cook until it starts to bubble or boil. Just give it a good mix. Just let that bubble. So with that, my the rest of my uh, coriander, I'm just going to sprinkle over the top of the kamandukla. Man, I'm not a coriander fan. I never have been because, I don't know, I'm just weird, maybe. But I can't, when I can't taste it, I'm fine. So I can't really taste it, but it will add extra flavour to your kamandukla. Whatever's left in there, I'll just drop into that one. 
So just to show you, I've just put the coriander over the top. Set that aside. As you can see, it's starting to boil now. So just let that boil for a, a few a few minutes, a couple of minutes. Then I, oh, I'm dropping everything. Then I will show you what we do. So once that's done, what we will do is we'll drizzle it over the top, like in the cracks and crevices of the Carmen Dukla. And then you let it sit for around about mm, maybe five minutes and then you can probably eat it straight away or let it cool right down and eat it that way. But like I said, this doesn't last long in this house because both my husband and I love this one. So again, this only took a... Uh, the common dukla itself, maybe mm, 20 minutes with all the mixing of your ingredients. That only took a few minutes, if that. Um, and then I stuck it on the stove for 20 minutes and then I checked it and it came out clean, so that was ready. So then I cut it, set it aside for a few minutes, a few seconds or whatever, and then I cut it into squares and now I'm just doing my tempering. So it's that simple. Okay, now I'm just gonna move this camera back and I'll bring in my Carmen Dukla. Pop it down there so you can see. How's that? Is that centered for your, for your wall? I'm gonna turn off my stove because it's all cooked now. Sorry, I'm probably putting too much steam there. So I've just got a, just a spoon. So you'll see all the mustard seeds and everything and all the juices. So all this is gonna go on top. So in the crevices, spread it out a bit. You make this, you'll fall in love with the flavors too. I know I did. But you don't have to have it that spicy. You can have less spice, but it is supposed to be, you know, salt, sweet, salty kind of spicing that goes with it. So I'm just putting it all around as much as I can, spreading it out, just like that. I love brown mustard, oh, sorry, brown or black mustard. I love mustard seeds in general anyway. But common dukla is, you, you know, it's more of a, mustard seed than what it would be a coriander one just in the cracks put that juice in there all this will go in here I missed a piece there we go I got you oh that just looks delicious if you have more coriander put more coriander and fresh coriander over the top I just did mine pre like before, so make sure I get all the good yummy bits out. And let's spread it out and I'll just pour the rest on there and it's done. So you let that sick sit and soak up. So it will soak up all the um, tempering. Which is what you're gonna need. So in about five minutes, that's ready for you to eat. Please comment, like, and subscribe to my channel for more delicious recipes. Have a good day.